and and say welcome uh, and we're just about under the question processing the question if one sees a messy desk and says to oneself i have to organize this what does the word the verb organize mean in that context and you missed a couple of good answers um creating an organizational structure mm -hmm. yes so i mean at least i mean i'm looking at this first part and i mean it, it seems a gosh a lot like what we were talking about just now with the mm -hmm. um you know like or uh, the filter like a playground as a as a place where games are played with a filter as a scope you know with capabilities that allow you to construct the, the filter yeah intentionally placed it you could even say i organize it in the background because it's kind of already saying things and if somebody starts to read it might affect their answer so this is a situation mm. i organized and i now intentionally use the word organized of course um so but i, I think all of these answers that you gave, uh, gave uh, are kind of for me pointing pointing out that the word organize in that sentence is kind of a rabbit hole. Like, how deep does it go? It's, it's a very simple sentence. I have to organize this. But it goes to remove the extra nails, like Jeremy said. But then what is the principle that says that something is extra nails? It's a, it's a kind of deep ontological question. Could be practical, but can go as deep as was one, one wants to be. And then Martin's examples go, goes to almost like ontologic. So, and semantics, semiotics of um, of the organization, and then Leo brings in structure, which once again like opens uh, another element of this rabbit hole in itself. And I don't think that's an accident. That depth, that rabbit hole, is in that word, uh, which is kind of like in a way painted over when we say organization. It's like like. Like from this, like I could put it in this way, let's make it into a metaphoric image that I place to this organization alongside this conversation and this text in the background, which is that from this rabbit hole over a millennia, we have brought out different structures and then we have kind of ossified them, made them into bone with some moving parts and we call those organizations. But all those organizations have been born out of this rabbit hole of, of possibilities, which is still present when we say I have to organize something like mm. in a way, like there's always this open of these questions that it could mean anything like what's your ontology, what's your principles, what's your structure, those all of those are open questions and, and we use this bone bony forms to kind of hide ourselves from the depth of that rabbit hole. Uh, Bekong, can I ask a quick like mm -hmm. etymological question? You can make that move. Um, <clears throat> I have always used this kind of uh, uh, this thing for myself that like to, like organic, particularly or organization, mm -hmm. it is kind of it refers to things being organs, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So like that's I think where the kind of ontology sits, like what is a thing and what is not a thing. Basically what Jeremy also said, what's the extraneous like. So and there you yeah, you you're straight on ontology. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yeah, for the same reasons, I think. And and it's mm -hmm. an interesting combination that organ and organism, which is uh, almost like a parallel word for organization, live in the same stem, like branches from the same root or same trunk so to speak um which is also not an accident um but then i can introduce another like i'm putting pieces on a kind of imaginary table and i'm probably too many pieces but that's okay uh, uh let's think of this so okay if one makes a game one essentially has this right to redefine everything like say a king that's a concept that exists in the world and you have certain like in this world you have certain responsibilities how you use the word king um you can kind of go over those re responsibilities but expect to be called the, upon that like you're not using the word king right or whatever 
But if you make a game, there is a curious happening that you have kind of rights of defining a king, but really any concept into a completely new form. Like what is a king in chess? Well, it's a piece and then it has these moves, etc. And that's completely all right. So there's this interesting right that games can be agnostic to reality, truth, verity, call it whatever. And uh, that, and I, I say agnostic quite literally in the sense that they kind of can take from it, they can use it as is, they can modify it, mutilate it, and that's all all right. Um, if that is understandable, this this quality that actually goes through games, and it seems to be a kind of known issue, that games have this right of kind of just taking anything and and being completely agnostic of uh, its correspondence to reality or not. Is isn't I just is an oxel the same thing as a playground, but it's also a capability. It's a it's a playground in a monadic sense. And mm. this is, might get too nerdy, but, uh, or like. Playground has a scope and filter. Yes, also like, also like a point and node and space at the same time. And yeah. so how point is actually a space or a start of a space, yeah. which is the whole idea of monad. I'm now talking in Leibnizian sense uh, mm. that the Leibniz, like, for some reason, people still have a problem with why Leibniz is saying that the monad is the smallest of the small. It's smaller than anything that we can see as small, and it contains the infinity. Mm -hmm. Like uh, this is supposed to be a paradox, but there's nothing paradoxical about it because monad is inherently perspectivic. That if if you set a point from where you look at the whole world, it contains the whole world. It is individual particular because it organizes the world organizes in its own particular way and the perspective in itself is the point next to nothing mm. and that is the idea of a monad. i mean there's a lot of other things to monad but that's that's how it's structurally composed but also this sort of perspective is at the same time a point in the smallest of sense and a space and because it contains everything like uh, potentially so in this sense because i can point to it say again and because i can point to it yeah yeah exactly uh so in this sense like if, what if we had pixel or pixels or oxels pixel like things that function like this that they are like points but they essentially like say i organize things from here which kind of fits with the oxel being organizational element. And it's inherent to monad. Like every monad is an organization and reorganization. Does that make sense? Kind of. What was that? I'm, I'm, so I have the benefit or detriment of having missed a couple of things due to this a high speed period that I've been in, but like, um, and we can continue. I just want to kind of maybe pin this somewhere in the, in the record. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, this kind of, this kind of, I, I kind of get you and I kind of make a remark like um, the evocative notion or the evocative, let's say, uh, virtue of what of what you just like the last part that you said, um, is kind of I think a little bit maybe how to say it's already suggesting a certain type of structure which other kind of terms, you know, would possibly also enable mm -hmm. while kind of you know. Um, being of a little different materiality that they, you know, yeah, hint at. So like that, that I just because you can you go to Monad and uh, and 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 maybe that's the comment about, that I'm making. That uh, that's a that's a thing that's happening already. 
Yes. That's the choice. That's the choice right now. Yes. And it kind of it pulls it pulls a little, it pulls some type of a carriage be, behind it, and and you know where there could be other things to be pulled. Yeah, I agree, and this is why I kind of like precaution the monad with nerdiness, like because it's both a good descriptor, but this is not going to be or trying to be authentic to monads in Leibniz sense. It's just like a where does this structure exist culturally? Well, it exists in Leibniz, although maybe it's telling that it's one of the most misunderstood and underutilized part of Leibniz, because even mathematic monads don't really do exactly that. Uh, and not that they have to, but nevertheless, like some of these, like the kind of extremeness of the monad has been somewhat lost. And the possibilities that come from that structural extremeness that Leibniz was proposing, um, which I think is interesting. And it's interesting for game design and game architecture, um, which is something I'll come to. Maybe maybe I'll make a practical example. So, so let's imagine like a, almost like a snapshot, a complete fragment inside a game, quotation marks, called Oxel. And there somebody had defined reading, like just the word reading, which is a cultural monolith like uh, present everywhere. But they, they're using the right of the game of being agnostic to meanings, like the King example. And they're defining reading as um, a, a form of a puzzle, uh, a form of puzzle construction where each for word forms a jigsaw piece um, that is used to build a mental image and then there is a whole paragraph about the mental image, which is like, it's not necessarily a concrete image, et cetera. But it also suggests some forms that some people built this into actual images and see pages, like, like when they have read a page, they see several pictures in their heads. Now, through this, I have redefined reading. And uh, and also set a new practice towards all the text in the world. And but it in it in itself the act is quite modest. It's just like I define reading as jigsaw building, and I define words as jigsaw pieces, and then maybe I build practices about this building out of uh, building out of jigsaw pieces. Um, and those practices become their own branches. Maybe somebody starts doing them. Um, so that's a very modest act. Like it could be written in a normal text. It could be written as game rules. Doesn't really matter. Um, all of those are possible. But in itself, what is happening there is a redefinition of culture that somebody could take upon. Um, in essence, join the game. And then it would be quote unquote real or at least actual for those people. Um, maybe you're not finished, but I interrupt anyway. Maybe mm -hmm. that means that I'm not interrupting. Go ahead. Um, you have that um, right. Um, where's the mon what's the monad? Where's the monad in that example? Well, in a way, like it's making the reading behave like a monad. But that's but that's a little bit of a different thing. Isn't a monad like a universal? Uh, like nope. isn't the monad? Doesn't the the monad have the kind of a, some uh, uh, the ambition to be the explanatory part beneath everything? Is that not kind of the idea of a monad? Mm -hmm. So, like yeah. in this case, you have a maybe Leo. I don't know if I'm borrowing a term from you or just kind of too lazy to think of other words. Like, is that like if it's a kind of a scoped monad, then it's not a monad in that in that tradition. You would be correct. And this is exactly why I said this is not trying to replicate the monad, but just right. use a monad as a descriptor. But but in a way, like in, in its lofty task, the monad is kind of shackling itself into this culture of truth. But this is looking at like, hey, that's a cool structure. One can make a game like a, a playful approach out of it. Right, but so basically what you're ending up is a kind of multiplicity of monads. Yes. Uh, yeah, because like the key thing here is like, because I changed reading 
and by the agnostic rights of games, I created like a monad-like perspective reality where all text reconfigures itself and reorganizes itself. And I'm intentionally using quite a modest example because then somebody could say, I'm creating into something different. And then that forms a reorganization again. Um, but it looks towards just like a monad it is a perspective. It looks towards all text. And everything else you could have in reading um, and reorganizes. Why, Pekko, Why would you in a in a in a kind of in a, in a now I'm trying to avoid the word perspective in a kind of pursue such as the one that you just described? Why would you go to activate the term monad once you know once you already know? that you don't refer to the kind of like universal tradition of the idea of a monad. Why, why, then, why then use the term? I mean, it's a good question. Like for me, it's, it's, and this is why I put the cautions before saying it, is like, like, like said much earlier on, is like this is also how to bring people into the understanding of the game, which is kind of a travel we're on. And uh, in a way, like using the monad is kind of an experiment because there is something useful there, the understanding of the structure. And there is something that is problematic there is like if people get too hung up on the monad, that becomes a problem itself. So like I'm not, yeah. I'm not like saying it has to be there. I'm trying to build the journey like yeah. through the path of mon monad. Like, I've, like I've, I, have a, I have a bit of a hunch and I might turn out wrong. Uh, that it might be a bit kind of veiling a lot of the stuff that is equally important or even even maybe more important just I think by you might the, be right. the brutality of the of the of the concept yes that's yeah. a nice word there, there is a brutality it's a it's a very kind of light action uh the oxal and it's a brutal one at, at the same time it's extremely brutal towards culture I think the oxal, I find the oxal way less problematic because that's kind of open to be defined than the monad. I think yeah. the monad kind of kind of suggests a particular way of kind of thinking of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, maybe maybe I feel that could get in the way of what the oxal might really want to be doing. I think you might be right. Like, and this is kind of my caution with it, but like this is all experimental ground of how to explain yeah. this. Yeah. Um, and, but like I'm, I'm kind of like semi harmonizing, resonating with your uh, cautions. Like I, I feel that, but but like like if one kind of steps over the monad, okay, uh, now we just like hopped off the monad. Monad was like a Super Mario platform, and we just left it, uh, and and we go to this moment of somebody redefining reading in this manner. Uh, like, or any other manner, but like, let's just use this sort of, that it, the words behave like jigsaw puzzle pieces. And the question hopping from word to word is actually a question of like connecting them to pieces that build an image, which is not too far from what reading is, but it's also a little bit different. Uh, like it puts the whole process of reading into a new light. Um, like like in that moment like i i think martin's word brutality is is fitting is because like the brutality partly becomes from this right of being agnostic to reality it's like i have the right to redefine reading like inside this game reading is different just like the king is different in chess um, um but then like that's being said about everything else there are a couple of effects of this. Uh, first of all, like if you follow the cascade, if you take that attitude and you take that structural possibility, all the culture turns into material. Like in, uh, if you were to make an art piece and then there was a storage room and there was stuff and that would be your material, you kind of can treat the whole culture and all its output in the same manner. Um, that is like, if I, I, I can take any thing I create as an oxo 
it can be much more complex um, than the reading. Maybe with reading, I define further practices and kind of grow that or define something else. But all of that is really treating like all the structures that culture has made as just material, like meaning you can chip off pieces from it, you can wrench it, you can change it, you can put it in a new configuration. All of that becomes possible. Does that make sense? It was funny. It was funny. Sorry that I'm just No, no, no. Go ahead. Mike. The beer is helping. Um, it Good. was funny that you um, that you said um, you made it to, into something different than reading, than what reading is. Mm -hmm. And isn't that a bit like uh, uh, almost kind of forgetting what you just achieved in a way? Uh, because, I mean, we spoke about the word is, obviously, mm -hmm. earlier, because basically you now it's a bit up for grabs what reading then is, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I think you're point. tracking nicely. Uh, Leo, you were saying something. Go That's ahead. That's the point, you know. It's yeah. like he, he gets to redefine what it is, like, in the context of the game, in the context yeah. of the Oxel. Yeah. And in a way, the Oxel can be really small, as it starts, but it's it's kind of like very flexible to scale. Like it's merely a matter of how many people join it, how many people join your reading game, or how many people join the Oxol, which kind of nests within it the reading game, simply by defining itself as an Oxol, um, and and it can grow from there. So it lives towards the let's say the reality order of things as a parasite. Like it looks at all of them as sources that it can leech from and happily hops on the skin of culture, uh, parasiting from it, whatever it wants and growing as large or being as small as it needs to. That's a bit the condensation thing, no? Say again? That's a bit the condensation thing that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, yeah. That's yeah. precisely it. Yeah. So, so I might define an oxal as a norm Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, and in the context of the game, I I might define an oxal as an intentional norm. Right? Mm -hmm. So often norms in groups are just simply inherited based on you know our assumptions and expectations. So in the context of the game, if I were able to to offer an intentional norm that was taken up. Um, then that would, I, I could see that as being something um, interesting. Anybody else? I like that. I would say also you could say norms as art, even though even that is too limited, but, but all of them are kind of your definitions and norms as art is a way to describe it. Nice one, both. Like taking the artist attitude towards norms as a medium is, is, is one way to think about it. Which kind of, it, what it does, it kind of unlatches a certain cultural hold up point, which is the fact that, I mean, on some level, we all know that every norm, convention, structure from justice to how do you go to cafe is an artificial thing. It's our creation. So we're living on fiction. But then at the same time, we have this attitude that, like as a convention again, um, that how do we should approach these uh, norms is somehow trying to hold them up. You know, like we say hello in this manner because we've always said hello in this manner. Like there is a kind of traditionally of how do we maintain the structure itself? Um, uh, and how do we maintain these norms? So what this does is like introduce this gateway wormhole to go in. Now you are in a game called Oxel, but what it, it flips the switch of like, actually, yes, everything is artificial, but we start to treat them as just designs, as an attitude. They, they're not there to be shielded for the sake of shielding, but they are just material. Like, oh, that's a cool design, just like, 
the metaphor of material in the storage room for you to build the in installation, like, or your system of justice or way to behave in a cafe or say hello is material for us. A uh, couple of things, if I may. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you had in the beginning of this, the question like, how do you get people to join mm -hmm. this game? Kind of, to me, it's almost like, uh, it's a bit of a kind of infection Mm -hmm. like because like now we're the ones who are here and kind of we're kind of so far primed that we you know follow the conversation and in, in to at least some some kind of meaningful extent um it's already happening right mm -hmm. we're already we won't be ever not playing that game mm -hmm. you know I'd, kind of lest we'd be <clears throat> occupied to some crazy extent like i have in the, in the past week where you can only think about execution which is the most horrible thing that you can do so basically maybe that's the kind of degree of freedom that is needed to kind of let people play in on that game yeah um the other thing that i was just thinking i don't know if it makes any sense or contribution in this moment is that one could think of this as a kind of a bit of like a synaptic training so like any any um concept that or like any term Mm -hmm. image whatever we want to you know, say uh, element that we bring up allows for different uh, kind of continuations or, or additions to it because of the shape that it has and because of kind of how those uh, interact with kind of other pre-existing um, uh, expectations and so forth so like in the sense like as we're kind of condensing toward uh the step of reading being this jigsaw puzzle thing um it's mainly kind of a kind of a synaptic training that that becomes the thing that we're kind of more used to muscle wise like brain muscle wise mm -hmm. than other things so this kind of repetition thing and yeah 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 and i i like that kind of direction and in a way the game is a framework for you to get into this synaptic training because i mean games change behavior even chess to use that same example because it's everybody knows it what it ultimately does it actually trains your synapses like to think in chess like even the beginner chess player has to start thinking in chess to be a chess player and and like that's the kind of once again this sort of interesting rather powerful aspect about games is like they're ultimately about how, who you are or how you are uh, like Chess is about a kind of a person you become to play chess, but you could say that from any game. And this is kind of tapping into that power, but then saying, okay, we actually are conscious of it, so let's utilize it. Uh, like that, that the game gives you the framework to kind of like to retrain your synapses in the sense of giving you the power to create an oxal, giving you the power to invite others into the oxal, which then can strengthen your oxal, which becomes a reorganization point perspective monad of, of um, uh, reorganizing the culture itself or its material. So in a way, like the whole, like underneath there, there is like, like to create the oxal, there's several tricks, like slides of hand, like card moves, like pull knotted into one that are based on certain kind of ontologies of games, often not talked about too much, um, like this agnostic to reality or truth and, and, and many others but like together they create this sort of small little point which in itself is a potential kind of branching point like like there's an infinity of oxals that can be created oxals can contain themselves or, or other oxals um i was getting ahead of myself of saying oxals can uh, contain themselves because that's actually a quality that is in this but let's not go there yet because that's blows up the structure yet again uh, uh, but but it's this idea it's, and it's a kind of culture it's a game but it's a culture of practice like I can see the world through oxals I particular oxals or generally like in the culture of making oxals like being in the game and I can do that uh, at any moment and I can step 
away from that because it's not requiring me to be there 24-7. Um, but it can be a moment, like two hours in a week or whatever, um, or whenever I meet these friends. And it, it in this sense, presents a, roughly speaking, a kind of alternate reality, but almost like alternate reality of realities because every oxal in a kind of perspectivist manner can reorganize the reality yet again. If that is sensible, uh, if it if it can lose itself or so, then yes, it can actually lose itself. Maybe that is worthwhile to mention here is that, like in here, we have this sort of perspectivist structure. Let's call it perspectivist, not monadic. Like 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 in 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 a kind of rather extreme sense of per perspectivism, but there is a, also a recursive structure here. Um, that is like a, every oxal can contain other oxals. Like I make reading, but there I refer to, um, let's say, an oxal of images that redefines what images are. And of course, that's completely possible, nesting in that manner. But it's also possible to redefine the oxal. And I think that's where it becomes for me to be interesting when, like, so I was recently asked. Um, in, in the course, and I, I'm not sure if this, hang on, let me just think if that's a good example that not to bring. I will come to the point one way or the other. Mm -hmm. um, let me just skip the example for the time being. Uh, because, I mean, obviously, as, as, we, as we all realize, having, having spoken about things uh, and promoted things and thought about things, like, um, this is a very good, or like a very kind of possible um, term to latch on to. It's probably one that one could decide to write some stuff about and maybe publish some stuff about and like talk on conference about and, and so stuff. And then one has found that uh, platform, uh, but then it kind of stops being what it, you know, what it wanted to be. Mm -hmm. And so basically, uh, that's maybe a problem with the object and and maybe what is what is more interesting is that in a way what what we could be at the same time talking about not changing one word of what we have been now saying um maybe a practice mm -hmm. so like the word and i think that's way more interesting particularly if we speak about playing with culture because as this kind of thing maybe ossifies also or you know condenses into the next platform uh, that's that then is going to you know that is that's then going to be a part of extant culture so then it needs itself again in another kind of phrasing mm -hmm. to do to do what it set out to do and then 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 i think if we if we're trying to kind of chase that yeah commotion then we're beginning to be interesting i think i i i actually i think i totally agree with this like mm -hmm. i think at least because i mean i agree with the formulation of like okay what an oxal is right that i think like that that conceptual framing focuses too much on what it is and less um which takes us away from what it does yeah right like the oxal right like the pixel like the the image the the of the of the isness as like the the basic building block there you know and like yeah. i think there's a lot more here that uh is maybe getting hidden behind um that kind of framing um because the focus is on what it is which is maybe important you know because if you're trying to actually build the practice out of like little tokens right but um yeah, I don't know. No, you're completely right. And this is also, I'm trying to actually track, that's why I'm scrolling in the document, that somewhere here, there is precisely this, like, it's actually kind of, ultimately, it's changing the anchor of definition from what it is to what it does. Um, uh, awesome, yeah. Uh, and th this is also relates to that, you like, <clears throat> if you treat it as a recursive system, 
mm -hmm. a recursive structure. There, there are actually kind of nerdy, but interesting qualities about recursive dimension or recursive spaces. And one of them is that recursive spaces kind of tend to eat themselves, which is practically that Oxel can redefine itself. Like you can treat the Oxel as an Oxel. Um, and that is kind of actually logical in such a system, but it's also a quality that in, in itself is interesting here uh, is because it's, I'm, I'm not saying it's a magical miracle pill of, of, against the cultural inertia that Mar Martin is describing quite well, and I agree with, uh, but it is a structural uh, uh, aid towards that, like that the, you can redefine the Oxal itself at any point, just like you can redefine reading. Um, so the Oxal eats itself. Can I quickly say something? Yeah, just try it, and it, it's a it's a detour, and we can drop off of it immediately. But <clears throat> the uh, what to me there comes into picture is one thing that that is has been super interesting for me, which is this kind of the interplay because I don't know how to call it better, but the interplay between kind of knowing and remembering, mm -hmm. and like the agnosticism that you speak about, the not knowing, which is mm -hmm. kind of the the state of kind of necessity, like this is a necessity for, um, so basically now, as Leo also commented, we're building knowing, right? Mm -hmm. We're kind yeah. of, we're, we're fleshing this out. We get to kind of, we get to the is of it. Yes. Um, but then this this redefinition if if it is the oxel that can think that can forget about the oxel there you come to the moment of where you need to kind of like how do you deal at that moment with remembering and that kind of forgetting yourself that's the moment of death in a way right like that's the moment of art in a way like where you uh, how does how does a kind of um even if we say this is about the practice now, not about this thing, but how if you if you manage to describe that, then I think you have described art. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I completely agree with your direction that this in itself is important. Like the, and also like how you put like the uh, re remembering being called as knowing, uh, and like. A couple of things on that. Like I made a note for myself that I should describe the uh, game called the Is game as an Oxel, um, which is like how does the game of Is play, which is uh, or game of being in a way. But but that's that's a that's a whole side topic in itself. Like because that's a way to actually also change the Is and being as a quality. But then secondly, in in the sense of Calling remembering knowing is a key move, and I'm inten intentionally saying move here um, in in kind of cultural knowledge building. Like, um, and there are cultural moments where that has been kind of faced. Like, one of my among my influential findings was uh, reading upon the late monastery culture from. 680 to 980 and the kind of their takes on meaning uh and reading by the way also uh, uh because it's it's almost like a lost art it happened just before the academic culture started to sol solidify itself and it's quite radical in its in, in its sense but the one anecdotal point which relates here is like it's one of the reasons why we have the word invent and then we have the word invent inventory like making an inventory of something. And so why is the word inventory and the word invent, which in current culture are often thought quite uh, separate, why do they have the same root? Um, uh, like making an inventory in, in like somewhere in a shop is, is considered quite a kind of like a rudimentary practice of uh, functioning in a market economy or other and invent is something like far off in the realms of experiments 
but they, they intentionally have the same root. And of course, this comes from Latin because they were using Latin, but they intentionally thought of this connection. That is actually inventory is the very root of inventing for them. And, and why they were on this, because they had a completely different sense of memory, is that, uh, that actually rumming, like going into your memory, traveling into your memory is inventory. That is every passage you take in your memory is reorganization. Now we face the organization word again. And in, it's uh, unavoidably inventive. And the way to make inventions is actually inventorying your memory, uh, like which meant reorganizing your memory. Uh, and right. So this, this, so let me just kind of, for my stupidity, rephrase this. But I mean, it's been. I think I've been reading this before. Like, so what you're saying in some sense is that each time you kind of read out of your memory, you also write. Yes. Over your memory. Yes. So there's not, so like we can't like, and I love that. And I kind of, it feels to me so much more kind of uh, adequate and, and accurate in a way than the kind of hard drive memory uh, yeah. metaphor where you have a kind of non-destructive input output, like the kind of the, the act of retrieval is like neutral is that creatively neutral in that metaphor, while I believe it is not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and here it was inherently not neutral. Like that, in a way, like it's the memory. Sorry, say that again. It was, it, it was, what? it was inherently not neutral. Yes, exactly. In late monastery. It's kind it of was... like reading from a wax cylinder that you're basically just rewriting in some bit of a different way. Each yeah, time. and also like it's an exploration into a particular land that you always generate, and, yes. and, uh, yeah. and and that generation in itself changes the land. Yeah, and yeah. and why I'm saying this is, of course, this is um, like revisiting this, like how remembering in our culture is actually knowing, um, and kind of putting a question mark there. That bridge is kind of like put. There's a blockage on that bridge, and and you're now still on the side of remembering, uh, and and what you think or call as knowing uh, is uh, actually more inherently a creative act of remembering, um, and this is reflected in the culture. I'll stop this nerdy dig into the late monastery culture very soon, but I mentioned this part is that. Their usage of memory is inherently different. Like they use memory also as a term of for the future. So it has all temporal phrases like that. You can say, I remember X and you might be talking about future. Um, uh, uh, and which is kind of like um, a certain consequence of this pathway uh, uh, that what you're doing is you're actively organizing towards something in order for it to become a future. So how they read, I and mean, this is monastery culture, they, they were reading Bible. Um, uh, so when Bible has a phrase, we remember Zion and Zion doesn't exist. They read that as Zion in the future, which is we remember Zion is we organize things towards Zion to be. It's almost as if like in the kind of, um, because I, I've always, coming from design, I've always thought that like a designer like basically lives in the world could or mm. couldn't it or something like that. So like, it, it's like, a, I, I remember that this could also be read. I remember yes. that this could also be made from another material. Yes. And, and yeah. could, it, could is also the dimension of potential. So, that's what I mean. That's exactly. Organizational possibility. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And remembering it in the movement so that like even when you transition to a new organization a trace nice. is left because it, oh, the record uh was maintained to the um, yeah that's nicely said neil and and also i don't think it's an accident certainly that we when we come to these areas like the late monastery culture when we come come here you meet the word organization again like like for them, inventory, the word for organization, 
and the constant reorganization is kind of necessary anchor there that actually this this relates back to their very first example how do i organize this and the rabbit hole that opens uh, is that and the fact that perspectivism and even the monadism really means as a perspective that it's about reorganizing the world from that point and that makes it always that everything is different even though everything comes from the same material i'm going to come back to this idea about remembering and the risk that sort of exists in the in the oxal mm -hmm. so if i forget that i'm inside of a thing that is designable then i'm i'm sort of stuck in it right? yeah. If, yeah if whatever it, you know we're sort of building these these layers that sort of like teeter and wobble on top of each other and if one of them becomes like drops out of visibility if i if i forget that i am a conscious designer of of this entire fucking space but get stuck inside of one that i think no but this one is real this is the real one like no 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 you know uh, these oxals must be um whatever the aesthetic becomes like the the dominant aesthetic becomes oxals are dynamic or whatever yeah. right and then we start playing only the game of oxals are dynamic and we forget about oh no but there's actually a whole additional parameter that we could sort of change that that actually starts uh, exploring the design space for stability yes. or you know any 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 possible parameter set anybody else i just want to say that i love that you that you um approach this in like by bringing in that this is to to a, to, a, to a substantial degree an aesthetic matter mm -hmm. i really really like that because i think that is kind of a uh, highly uh highly on, on like highly uh at stake like how oh, jesus my language is leaving me um that's a kind of like high alert layer to me that we forget about that the aesthetic here plays a massive role in kind of you know mobilizing or not these types of structure structure uh, imaginations and you're both uh and i thank jeremy for introducing this you're channeling a particular, I think, seven or eight pages long rant from Nietzsche, which is for me maybe the most culminatory Nietzsche text, which is the truth and for on truth and falsehood or in an extra moral sense. There's a couple of different translations. Sometimes it's of truth and falsity in an ultra moral sense. But that particular text, it makes a few points and one of the points is uh, uh like how to construct truth as a form of forgetting and it's exactly saying what jeremy is saying is that to, to, to come to become truth the tragic of truth is that it requires forgetting that you are in a construct and 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 that this hey, becomes, please sorry say the title again please one more time of truth and falsity in an ultra moral sense or another translation of truth and falsehood in an extra moral sense but you can find the german and it's really like seven eight pages long and it's it's one of the most brilliant texts that he ever wrote i think uh so we have to smoke james yes also that but <laughs> but but for martin nietzsche also introduces the dimension of aesthetic on this precise point on the, in the essay and kind of from the angle you're coming from, that that there is this aesthetic, but then the tragedy of humanity is that it has to forget in order to have truth, to have structure. Uh, and then he compares that to a spider whose reality becomes its web. And it's uh, like the web is its tool and enables the spider, but it's trapped by its web, which is its own construction of reality in itself um uh it yeah like i said it's a brilliant text but on this point i thought about it is that like yes we need construction and staying in the point where nothing constructs is another kind of tr tragedy 
But there is a point here, which is that games allow for construction. They allow for, let's say we actually keep this structure underneath us. We accept the structure now being our basis. And they allow for structure in a very interesting sense. It's just like, let's play with this. Let's accept this, this, this is our game, <clears throat> which is both committal and no, non-committal. It's, it's, or it's committal and insincere in a way. And, and this is, in a way, the Oxel is proposing that we can have all the structure we want. Like I'll take this Oxel, this Oxel, and that Oxel as, our, as my basis, as my land, as my soil, as my terrain. That's completely okay in games, which allows for construction, but it puts the construction in a different sense. It's not anymore the war of truth, as Nietzsche calls it, of uh, like a king of the hill battle of uh, that we can only construct by having this eternal battle of truth, um, but rather we can construct anywhere. And those bases are then considered in the sense of what they do, but they can be an infinity of hills, not one king of the hill battle. Um, this, this probably has to be shot down, but maybe, maybe there's a chance it would not have to be shot down. Because I think the, if what we kind of described a little earlier with this kind of, <clears throat> this question of like the oxa forgetting itself and becoming something else by you know somehow stay, still staying alive and now to the season of getting and we need structure and construction in this sense and that not not constructing is a tragedy like maybe the, because in some way you uh, also with this kind of notion of commitment uh, which is out of necessity to some extent um Overcoming such a structure, like the structure that you kind of live in, or like that you kind of base yourself or that like you're meaning upon, which is you know your kind of sanity and to, you know to some extent, um, reforming that uh, or like standing at the threshold of that being reformed uh, is a little is is a rather existential mm. uh, would be a rather existential moment. Mm -hmm. Right, and I think we're kind of facing that moment in many, you know, in many, many ways at this, you know, at this in this age. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe then gaming this kind of, and now I use the word kind of almost in a technical sense, this kind of exercise, you know, mm -hmm. exercise like practice, practice might be yes. Well, I also mean exercise kind of in this kind of physical, like you know, building up labor kind of thing. What labor? No, like training. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like work nice. out in like, but work in more than out. Like, um, maybe that is the bridge across that death, to some mm -hmm. extent. Yeah, uh, um, it's a little pathetic the words that I choose, but I hope you see. No, that like, that was. A, I I thought that was a brilliant perspective, Jakub. Yeah. Yeah, perhaps what would. Um... Hey, happy to have you, Jakob. Hey, hey, <laughs> great to see you, Leo, again. So just uh, what you were saying, say Martin, and also relating back to um, this kind of uh, excourse on memory and kind of inventory. So uh, what it brought to me, the association, was that when I was still like studying psychology stuff, and there was this approach, which was called coherence therapy, which I found to be like one of the like really more interesting ones from uh, all the from the whole palette but one of the concepts that they were working with is memory reconsolidation um, and also relating it to like emotional memory consoli consolidation but that's kind of the neurospeak but the the other perspective that they were like using was that actually when you are re kind of consolidating some of the deeper uh, let's say deeper memories you can be also reconsolidating like really the deeper structures of your relating towards the world and others and yourself so like very deep changes um which really the people were after some um length of the process of the therapy 
um, the people were really fundamentally changing some of their uh, experiencing and perceiving even of the world and relating to it, uh, including emotional reactions, including yeah. like trauma and resolving. But what I'm saying all this, it seems to me that it's it's and and when I was asking the um, like the author or the leader or, or like the the the, the, the trainer or the side the, the originator of of the approach. Um, like after his 40 years or so of experience with this i was like how is it for you when you are seeing the people actually changing their depth of their worldviews in very fundamental ways and experiencing this perhaps like multiple times isn't that also in, in a sense like existential and he was like yeah actually i'm not like speaking about this very often but i have kind of a spiritual or existential um, framework around this which kind of emerged for me um, after doing this because suddenly the reality is much more plastic in much more fundamental way so that was just I wanted to share that also like using kind of psychotherapy as a filter um, a bit Ooh, or, or, or vice versa like looking through this oxal lens to like different kinds of psychotherapy it can be a very interesting um, detour to a rabbit hole or something like that <laughs> yeah like definitely uh like for for me i can say like i mean going towards this kind of grounds is of course part, particularly kind of inherited from the uh like very long background in this sort of reality games which was a topic some weeks ago in 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 exorg um that and and this this is also like um like there there is a way when you start playing with reality which this is isn't like kind of crystallizing in a way like not the only way to crystallize there's infinite ways to crystallize it of course but and one way uh, it kind of affects you it affects you and it starts to affect the deeper layers in terms of how do you treat what you sense perceive observe um, and this is also why i kind of keep repeating this how everything turns into material material in the sense that you're supposed to make an artwork and there's this room of material and how the world starts to behave like that um, but then on the other hand there is this kind of necessity to build necessity to that everything doesn't stay as a horizontal sea that you do something and it's just left over and you have to make a new thing again and 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 i do think there is this in, interesting combination in the sense of the game of doing kind of both, like doing both the, like everything is reconstructive, uh, everything is reconfigurable, reconfigurable or, or reorganizable. But at the same time, there is always possibility to organize because in a playful sense, you can say, okay, I'll just take this as my basis because I'm considered by, by what it does. And if I think that this, whatever things I said, for myself as a basis, I built this platform on uh, like setting this thing into stone and this thing into stone builds a platform that's uh, reasoned in the, the in the game logic. And and this relates back to what Martin was saying. It's not a magical pill to the current situation of you know, call it post truth, whatever, but it, it, it is a proposal of a structural yet playful approach to it well it's 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 a make it's a <clears throat> like it's a kind of productive coping mechanism hmm. i think like it's a, it, that's what i meant that, like coping mechanism has, has of course like a mean like um kind of established a way of, of of being read as a term that i don't really want to evoke but uh but that's what i mean when i when i said uh, exercise yeah, you know, it's some kind, something kind of to keep training in that, in that, in that way, and to be comp because that, that's I think that, like to break it down into very kind of bourgeois terms. It's like to be comfortable in these things. Yeah, uh, yeah. I yeah. wanted to say one thing to what Jakob said because I think that's that's something that I enjoy very much uh, through this through this time now. Uh, that I think what appears to me is that through like these kind of frameworks that, 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 that are not kind of profiling themselves here. Um, what I think is a really, really nice thing is that they appear to allow 
you know, somehow kind of coherent um, observations uh, and, 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 and statements like across a lot of ma different materiality, materialities. You know, you can go from, you know, symbolic uh, like constructions that you made up due to certain whatever trauma type, but you can also just go flat to kind of physical material space. You can go to, you know, other parts of um, exchanges that, that occur and you can kind of still work with the same uh, framework. I think that's a rather powerful thing. Mm -hmm. Agreed. If I may, mm -hmm. um, it seems to me that an oxal is just a token. Sort of. It, cool. it, it, it can be. Like, uh, it can also potentially redefine itself, but uh, like it's a sort of a chameleon um, by its nature. Um, well, because the token can be put into the context, you know, of, you know, a slot. Mm -hmm. Yes, that also. Like, actually, slot structures in Oxal are is is a whole another topic in itself. Like, uh, which has some processing in itself, but it's certainly kind of um, an interesting topic overall. But like, like uh, in terms of this chameleonic nature, like in some of the earlier conversations, I was describing this sort of Oxal idea still a little bit more impressionistic fa fashion to Pablo, uh, who's sadly not with us right now. And I was like, because it's it's a kind of very simple thing. And to explain that, I was comparing it to concept. That it, like in a way, it's a cultural take that is setting itself on the same level as a concept is. Um, but on the side of it. And this is kind of apparent in the fact that if you look at the definitions of a concept, they are quite uh, fleeting, quite minimal, they're quite bad, or, or like quite lacking in a way. Um, and, and it's every time somebody tries to redefine it in a more comprehensive sense, it sort of fails. Um, and I do think it's a quality of these kind of things that they, they are actually kind of simple at heart uh, and it's partly comes from the com chameleonic nature. But here, the structurality is not so much loaned from the point of Oxal, because that also can be redefined, but the game that surrounds it. Like, because, like, going to these questions of, well, you can structure, you can construct, you can build a basis. But how do you invite to it? Well, you kind of invite to it just like you invite to a game. Uh, if you define uh, invite to another game, Oxal, then you invite to another game. Um, and there is an infinity of games. <clears throat> so there is a nature of offer that is in the nature of games in, in itself. Like every game, if you look at it as a wrapper, is an offer. Uh, like you can join that game, you can commit to it, but then the game might set you into rules and kind of control you in this fashion, but the freedom actually comes from the fact that you can always step out because there are other games. And you can step out of that, like, this is a boring game, I don't like this, and go into another game, or another, or, or yet another. So, so there is a structurality there that kind of introduces this sort of almost pragmatics about how to have structures and how to have things built upon things. Um, as a possibility um, uh, by loaning from how games approach such things. That that's um, I mean the the capability of game shifting then I think uh, becomes uh, super relevant there and divining mm -hmm. it like um, you know like within like a certain distributed network of an organization not arriving into a dead end where a distribution of rights even if the memory of the past isn't here something keeps me stuck right because if if you give away the capability to shift then i would have to start a new age <laughs> yes. yes yeah <laughs> and that yeah which would be just to respawn right like yeah. totally it can be just a response, definitely. 
Can I? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe that's the answer to the question that I didn't ask yet, but I could maybe retroactively ask it. Like, how do you organize loss of memory in, in the digital context? I, I actually here, I, I've been trying to summarize what, like, you know, the different things people have been saying in the context of memory. Um, and so I, I got a little something. Um, the, the change of the distribution of rights into a new scope is recorded on the ledger. That way we can remember the potential of organization because as we move through to new structures, the transformation of structure is recorded on a distributed ledger such that if we forget, which is the condition of a new truth's unveiling, um, um, meaning to, whether by choice or otherwise, temporarily suspend doubt and the fear of forgetting in an existential leap of faith into the new context of a new situation, a new playground from which we can at least truth through play, Lacanian play. Yes, and um, history in itself uh, is just an oxal. Uh, it's every history <laughs> contains a logic. Like you create history by setting a logic of retaining and how those retain things relate to each other like uh okay, the ghost the ghost yeah. of history <laughs> and and this is actually apparent in things like bitcoin it's it's like a completely artificial logic to have a history in the manner of the ledger of blockchain but it also points out that history is always constructed in itself and and this in itself is it's it's part of this potential of construction as well the history and how it functions i need I would really, really like to respond to Leo, but I would have to hear it one more time in order to do, but I have to ask something else before. <laughs> Choices. <sorry>. Go ahead. <laughs> like, I, I made up my mind yeah. because I forgot the other yeah. side. Um, how can, uh, how can a non, how can ox, how can an oxo be something else than uh, an equivalent of a concept? Meaning, how can an, how could an oxal be a, a pre-conceptual or non-conceptual thing? I think it is a concept, man. Hegel all the way. No, but like, like I mean, I'm dealing in, I'm dealing in some part of, of you know the, the practice universe where where the things in between are really the things that you're kind of that are that make what you want to be at in some sense and and in order to be concepts at a point at some point before that in which whatever direction time now flows they need to not be concepts like right now it's it's we we, we use we, we we move in the in the in this in the kind of track of language and we say oxo can be history can be an oxo fine i get it's kind of i understand that the same way that reading can be an oxo or what you know or subject of an oxo which one should maybe say but like how could a thing well maybe it's just as easy as moving out of the scope of language which we are now stuck in because we use this medium here but if i go if i shut this down and I go back to the workshop where I started my day this morning, um, I might observe myself doing something and then call that an oxa or like make that the subject of an oxa, right? I mean, this is, this I think is becoming okay. just, no, I mean, like, I'd be, but, but, but I mean, can it then be kind of, because oxa is also in that way, it, it kind of um, advertises, so to speak, a way of how to deal with itself, with the oxels, like connecting them, making part of a new kind of conversation as a kind of, you know, micro society game in a way. But can that, can such kind of pre-conceptual, um, uh, you know, content, so to speak, uh cannot be treated with, with the same kind of in the same kind of law like mechanisms as the pre-recorded mm. on the ledger well do you mean pre-recorded meaning like not pre-recorded pre -recorded 
as in it hasn't been recorded or yeah. yet, or maybe it never will. It's outside of the scope of that which maintains the concept. And so this is interesting because basically the, you just yeah. said you, basically you just said it's outside of the scope. So it needs to be translated into something kind of expressible slash recordable on chain uh, in order to be treated with the kind of logic that we have been developing over the past kind of hour or something here. So what happened, what are those, what, you know, how can, how can the ox kind of perspective or idea apply to things that, that, that are necessary in the process that the ox kind of suggests, but not capturable in the kind of uh, exchange economy that we are using here? I, I, yeah, I hope. Yeah, Peko, to go for it. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, do do say I could go after. Like, I have stuff um, on sure. there. But, I uh, no, I I I feel like I I feel like where I see you might be going, but maybe. Um, but yeah, no, I'm thinking like, uh, it's like the Oxel as a framework. If we can say that, uh, all tr all transformation of organization can be translated into Oxels by choice, right? As a capability to choose to transcribe, to choose to That's uh, not remember. problematic, yeah. Right? But the thing is that like, that's the oxal as a concept should have, there's the oxal as a concept, and then there's the oxal as the, as a abstract concept versus the thing that is actually recorded, which you're trying to record um, but can I match those? I mean, like I can, I can, like if I because it can't be one to one because the DSP. I mean, we're not the Axel, whatever this coding system. It's something onto which we're recording from an external quote unquote. Right. So you like, said it, it's absolutely rifts. outside, like not, not, not exactly. So because translation is not a neutral thing. So basically, they like like inhabiting and the act. Like, it's so like what? there's a dissonance there, and the act of recording is like an act in itself, right? Yeah, 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 that yeah, like yeah exactly. Might even might is also a uh, is also an oxal. Yeah, the act like, of recording. But that's, but that's not the, entry the question. Point. That's not the question. Because the then there's everything is... that's outside the act of recording. Outside of that oxal, you're in a totally another realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is but this is a little curious, right? I mean, if 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 oxal makes the claim of being, um, as you said. Like you started this, like to make it like all of culture, uh, it's limited to the conceptual realm, isn't it? No, wait, wait, okay. Uh, I thought about this a lot for a Game long time, <laughs> and uh, for <laughs> different takes. Um, a, a couple of things to set up like one, the ledger. You can always say the Oxel could be set to a ledger and kind of hold on to that quick. And, and of course, a context, a scope can be set where the oxal is set to a ledger. And I would kind of question the it being totally other realm where oxal is um, in a different fashion. It's not set to a ledger. That is, it's a different realm, yes, but it's a related realm. It has a relation. And that's the relation more, that you create, though. Yeah. Yeah, and even potentially a lot, like, a lot, a lot like Zora. Yeah, yeah, it can have a relational logic. It can have a whole tree. It can have a network architecture, even if it wants. And that's way more than just being a totally separate. Uh, and, Language and, is the DOS and a spirit. Yeah. So, so that's the key. One of the key powers here is that that actually these realms that have a say a different sense of an oxal are not completely separate because they can relate like this sense of oxal that sense of oxal that's already a relation but there can be other relations and those can be designed that's a that's a further realm of expression and further realm of interoperability in, in itself that can be played but furthermore there's more uh so like I had many, many, many different takes on this. One of them was the uh, the sept. Uh, you might know, or you might not, that concept is that by etymology is to grasp together, con together. Sept is a sort of a take of capere, which is to grasp, oh, and uh, 
uh, which is a nice word in itself. Like, uh, and uh, I like actually the sept, which is almost not used in English, and not much even in Latin as as a concept itself. Like the sept, as as kind of a meta category for concepts, because of course it would mean that like concept is just a sept. But anyway, um, but uh, I. Oxal is kind of take on this area, but a couple of things that I would categorize as strategy towards concepts. And uh, strategy is a key word here. Uh, is that first of all, we have said a couple of things already. One of them is that the game realm has agnostic relation to reality. And concepts are dependent on reality, even for their own existence. So that in itself allows for parastructures. You can make an oxal out of the concept, like it's certainly within the game rules, so to speak. But uh, it's it, that relation of being agnostic to reality allows you to set para realities all you want, uh, and allows you to say that concept is this, but it also allows you to say that oxal is parallel to con a concept in itself. And it also points out this quality of how parallel is almost like a parasite. Um, that, <clears throat> like, Oxal actually doesn't have to, it's not in the king of the hill battle, going back to Nietzsche, because there can be infinite amount of hills. It, it doesn't have to topple the concept. That's not its war at all, because uh, it's agnostic to holding to one hill so it can have other hills in itself and it can redefine the concept or it can set itself to the level of the concept it's just another organization another game to play um so but that also allows it to parasite from everything that concepts have brought which it's actually kind of doing already in all of our discourse during this session we have parasited on the concepts uh, and one of the ways that we have utilized is kind of utilizing Oxal as a concept, but at the same time redefining and reconfiguring how the concept works by setting game rules. So all of this as a combination, like the, the, I think the key possibility here is that the, the rules that set the ontology come from the game side is a key factor here. And they allow for this sort of parallelism and agnosticism. You don't have to hold on to one hill. That's one part of it. But that also allows, furthermore, this possibility of parasiting. Like, I can take anything from what has been created in the concepts and incorporate into my organization, into my game. That's already possible in itself. Uh, so, in a way, like some of the tr str uh, strains, I guess is a word um, that fits here, is like what you might be talking about is taking us back to the battle of the king of the hill. Like the Oxel has to uh, explain itself for the hill in order to actually challenge the concept, but it doesn't. It, it can make its I'm own. I'm not sure that that's what I meant. It's not, this is not a kind of comparison between two terms. It's not, it's not to say that concept is one, oxal is the other, and we make kind of a comparative review. That's not what I mean. What I mean is that we're trying to understand certain things, or like, you know, we're rehearsing or like playing with, with the, with the idea of understanding certain things by way of what oxal, what an oxal could be. The problem is that, or that like the problem that I wanted to, to kind of get to is that that can be done only with things that are already in a kind of, and now to avoid the word oxid, uh, the word, sorry, sorry, the word concept that are already kind of in a linguistic form that have, which is to say that have been translated, wrapped into a very particular logic, a particular also because it's English language that we're using, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there's like, 
there are things that are impactful on my capacity to imagine or not, or to reimagine, that do not pierce through from the other side uh, of, of language. They no. are not, so to speak, in a language formatting. And, yeah. and so since we establish, or I think, like, I mean, we, 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 I suppose, assume that or agree upon the fact that translation is not a neutral thing. Um, that's a kind of, that's where the kind of boundary of the Wirkmächtigkeit, of the kind of um, applicability of Ochse would appear for me to lay, and that was my question, what to do with, you know, um, observables that, that are outside of this, of this linguistic contour. Oh yeah, okay. That's that's another question that in itself is interesting. Like because and and so just to add for understanding, this is not like an ideological kind of fun here, because these are impactful on transforming my conceptual domain. Mm -hmm. The, I mean, this is a whole can of words, and there is stuff on this, but but to summarize very crudely. I mean, the, like, this is one of the kind of strengths of human thinking is that it both kind of utilizes language as the sort of very light creative tool of creating new connection points. But at the same time, those tools of language don't just refer to language, but they refer to anything with sense, any form, like sensible or nonsensible, just even a thought that is you cannot put a sense form to it can relate to a concept like quite literally create a relation with it so the conceptual is not just language um and this in itself offers a kind of a power here is that um well so that's what i'm saying right that's exactly yeah. what i'm saying in other yeah. words that's that they that they impactful relate upon each other mm -hmm. yeah and but it means that the oxal is likewise is not uh, limited to the concept of language or, or the uh, scope of language as well. It can have the same, like uh, l like if I describe an oxal that is relating to uh, physical world, whatever, that's completely possible. Of course, here the language is a great instrument of creating them, but of course it's not limited to that. You could make an oxal that is simply a picture like that's that's completely possible but but nevertheless it shares the same um media agnosticism as concept does like uh like concepts of never the... agreed with that since we began talking i don't believe in media agnosticism but okay continue um i mean uh that's a whole another question but like <laughs> i I'm, I'm i'm not saying that it's not affected by media it utilizes i'm saying that it ultimately always has a door open to connect to any media mm. uh which is a different thing yeah. uh so but in this sense like uh concepts while often the kind of their realm and their battle to use nietzschean terms is is language against language battle it out like go to the ring and fight this concept against that concept. But nevertheless, mm -hmm. like beyond that, they, they are connected to potentially everything and that is kind of, they're actually dependent on that. And this same possibility exists here, like in the kind of look uh, point of Oxal, like it's not dependent on only language, although language is a great way to utilize it because of its flexibility, but it's not like that it's only in that scope. Uh, so, yeah, like that's, uh, I mean, these are some of the thematics about what I still would call like strategy towards concepts. Um, uh, but I, I do think like the key part here is to remember the game and how game organizes um, the so-called reality um, that it puts in its scope, which can be everything potentially rarely is but this is one of the key quirkiness of the oxal why it's also it's kind of like 
very, very fundamentally a game and also very different from games that generally conventionally exist because it says everything is a, uh, the game board. Everything is on the board. And uh, that is an interesting quality of its own. I would like to play with that. I, I, I would like there to be some form of parameter, some form of like this question that I think Martin, you dropped was like, how do you organize for forgetfulness in a post in a post blockchain world is really mm -hmm. interesting. So yeah. how do you set, how do you set, mm. how do you set a pick, uh, uh, an oxel, right? So that it no longer becomes this, it, it has some countdown, some trigger, some, some mechanism that says, oh, you know, after this threshold, that's it. You're stuck with it. It no longer becomes re reprogrammable. Um, how do you organize for that forgetfulness so that, you know, maybe I just, maybe I just no longer recognize, I, I stop remembering that this, this space is programmable and it, it still continues to maintain that, that, uh, that possibility, but it's, it's no longer actively engaged with. Um, so uh, this, this has been an interesting ride, uh, gentlemen. I got to get the fuck out. But, uh... I, I think we're finishing, and I agree on the ride. The one thing I would say to you, just to your questions, how do you organize for forgetfulness, is the answer to that is a designer's answer, which is essentially infinite ways, but that as then it's the question for design. That is like the infinity is not neutral that the designer's task is actually come up with ways that then do things like are not just is, but do things. So how do you organize for forgetfulness? You come up with a structure that organizes for forgetfulness that do does things in a fashion that tailors towards the interest you have for forgetfulness. Uh, because every but that's, designer... isn't that is sorry isn't that a, going, going to be a little difficult because I mean now you have these kind of DAO things where people find in discords there are back channels you know reserved for like key members and so like basically you run up against power so like there's this isn't there also this issue like when you try to program for that you need to kind of take incentive and motivation into account because you kind of have to like lit, like how to say consciously this kind of forgetting has a different okay it comes from the, from another side doesn't it i yeah. I, I think I, br maybe... I bring it up i bring it up because i think it's a very interesting challenge to design mm -hmm. for there's yeah. like there's there seems like at my first glance my intuition is that there seems like there's nothing in the landscape that's going to make that easy or automatic mm -hmm. and because of that particular challenge i go oh okay all right um, so, um, mm. windmills and shit. Well, Jeremy and Martin, like one thing is in order to get towards the end, it's useful not to open huge cans of worms at the point when we should be ending towards a closure. But there is a lot of stuff on this, like, uh, and the, there's actually kind of takes on this precise topic on the structure itself. But what I would have to open is this sort of can of worms, what I call the claim model of truth and verity, which is the which is a whole how truth behaves like an ecosystem. Um, but what it's actually replicating is something that could be recreated by game structures. That is like every truth mm -hmm. is actually a question of um, uh, becoming part of that truth, like committing to it, like, uh, and that's its actual behavior itself. And uh, which is kind of like joining into the game. Um, and this is, of course, becoming, it's always has been the case, but it's becoming apparent in our current so-called post-truth culture that we are actually dealing with everybody committing to something uh, sort of actively, and this has been hiding on the, the carpet of broadcast media, which was able to like broadcast enough of cons um, consistency, consensus, to hide that fact, but it, it was always like that. But then that leads to the sort of like, um, that if we are these sort of islands of commitment, um, and islands being different um, configurations, 
there is another way of looking at it. If we can cannot get rid of that, then we can look at those islands as games. Um, mm -hmm. And that allows us at least recognize the reality, but turn it into a question of design, which then opens a huge amount of can of worms, but with some brightness in the horizon. Let's put it that way. Um, if, if I may do like a quote dump here, uh, mm -hmm. that I think is super relevant to everything that everyone's saying and might be a good, you know, end of the thing. Yeah. Thingy. Um, so I'm thinking about like, you know, what everyone's been talking about and like how Oxel and like in the self relation of Oxel to Oxel, self relation of concept to concept as it like transforms through whatever, all of that stuff. So this is like a good little paragraph on that, I think. Um, self relation is the formal condition of intelligence, but only when it is steeped in the negativity of reason does it become an engine of freedom for which intelligence cannot exist without the intelligible and the intelligible cannot be conceived without intelligence. This essential correspondence, intelligence, intelligible, uh, uh, like the, the outside game reality mm -hmm. to yeah. the intelligible manifestation of it as an oxal, as oxals, um, That's a nice this catch. essential correspondence constitutes the truth of intelligence without which it is an empty thought. However, this correspondence is not given in advance and is never fully totalized. That's what we were saying. It is a labor, a project. Mm -hmm. Accordingly, treating intelligence as something that simply comes out of a black box of nature or technology is an equally empty thought. Mm -hmm. Once self-relation concretely becomes part of the order of thought that extends over into reality, nothing can stop the rise of intelligence. All given truths, all achieved totalities, all traps of history begin to slowly vanish like a spider's web, like the Nietzsche thing, baptized mm. in a corrosive salt, uh, solvent, realized this essential correspondence. Yeah, blah, blah. I mean, it goes on, but like the point is like, I, I, there's a huge, I, I could read the rest, but like, I don't know. I don't want to quote, quote dump you guys. <laughs> Where is that from? <laughs> um, it, This is like uh, on intelligence and spirit. It's like a Hegel's phenomenology spirit and oh, yes. science of logic recasted of through artificial intelligence. Can you can you post that even to Exor Group? Because it's a it's a great quote of like, isn't it looking at okay, if this is the condition, the human condition, call it whatever. Uh, okay, what can we do constructively with that? And in a way, Oxel is an answer, not the answer, because there's no the answer, but uh, and constructive answer of what are your tools then? Like, given this, what are your tools? Um, what kind of tools can you can have, you could have? And, and this is kind of um, a certain horizon certainly present in this current discourse. Uh, and, and, and kind of paint that text that you read paints that horizon quite nicely. So post it, definitely. Hey, yeah, what you're saying I'll, I'll too. Give, I'll, it's... I'll give you a thumbs up. Yeah. So if you make the move, I think your move towards ending was great. Uh, this is a good ending because you're kind of bringing certain horizon closure. You're painting a sun in the sky. That's great. Um, we can see the horizon that you're painting. And I can give you that if you make the move of posting that quote, then I can make the move of giving you thumbs up uh, telegram points um, for that. Let's forge that reality. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. That's an organization we can set here. Um, but but this is the this is the rabbit hole of organization Same. we jump into, and and that's what opens up from there, uh, and how it's kind of present here, like throughout, as a thematic, is interesting. And then what can you do if you introduce the possibility of games as a structuring element, as a designer element, as a composable element? And that's what this direction is meant to open up. As another well done. do say. You were saying hold well on. Well done. Well done. No, I'm okay. saying well done. Good okay. Move. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and towards making a move towards the end, I really thank everybody here uh, for this extremely 
splendid discourse, which I think for me captures why entering this rabbit hole is interesting. It's not even about this particular shaping of the rabbit hole, but it's actually why it's taking uh, us to directions that in itself are fertile. Fertile for something that is culturally reflective, but at the same time, uh, reflective in terms of tools, instruments, possibilities of construction. And this is kind of what the whole point is, like to get towards those directions. And of course, it's the point of this little tiny thing called Oxel, which is a gateway to some places. And I do think we en entered some places here. Any last That's words? That's been fascinating. Thank you, everyone. Place your name, that's for sure. Thank you yes, very much. indeed. Um, with that, uh, shall we find an ending? Uh, I will, towards ritualizing the ending, I will stop sharing the background board, the game board, and then I will press <laughs> stop 